In this video, we're going to use Visual Studio Code to connect to a model hosted inside Power BI Desktop to both issue a query, but also make structural changes, such as adding some measures. So the first thing I want to do is create a brand new folder where we'll host the Visual Studio Code. So we'll create a folder called Query Tool, which will now open using Visual Studio Code. So I'll go File, Open Folder, and then select the recently created folder, click the Select Folder button. The next thing we need to do from the terminal window is to create a new console app by typing .net new console. No. Let's type that in correctly. Third time lucky. .NET new console. Wonderful. The next thing we need to do is install the correct client libraries. We're going to be installing two client libraries. The first, of, the first one is going to be the ADOMD client libraries. Uh, when we navigate to this page in NuGet and, and select the code that's shown in the .NET client library interface, command line interface, copy that to the buffer come back to our terminal window and paste that in. So that will give us the ability to issue queries against the model. And the next page we need to go to inside NuGet, NuGet is to get the client libraries for Tom, which is going to be shown here. And we will copy that command to our buffer then jump back to Visual Studio Terminal and install these client libraries. Wonderful. Now we can open the project and we should see the shell project called Hello World, which will run just to make sure that everything is working correctly. And when the dialog pops up down in the right bottom right hand corner, just choose yes to. And we run this and this should give us a, a hello world statement out into the console app to make sure that everything is working okay that so that looks really good <clears throat> the next thing we need to do is replace the code that exists here uh, with the code from the uh, from the blog site so if we jump to my blog example scroll down to the code uh, that we use here and select all of that, come back to Visual Studio Code, and overwrite all of the existing code. But a really important change we need to make is to ensure that we're using the correct port number. And a quick way to get the port number is using DAX Studio. So if we jump back to Power BI Desktop, using the external tools, we can go to DAX Studio. Now we're also going to write a query and save it as a file that we're going to use here. So first step is to get a list of um, values. So we're going to type evaluate, use the values function, and I'm going to, what I want to see is a distinct list of product colors. And if we run this in DAX Studio, we can see some results here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file into my, vi into my Visual Studio project. So we're going to expand VS Code, Query Tool, and we're going to call this My Query Colors. And we need to remember this file name, My Query Colors. So if we come back to Visual Studio Code and scroll down, we can replace myquerycolors.dax uh, with, with the version that was already there. And the port number is 50455. So if we come back to Visual Studio, 50455. Okay, so what I want to highlight before we start running this is in the sales table, 
here are the lists of columns and measures that exist. And if we jump to the canvas here, it'll only show us the ones that are, are, are not hidden. So now, if we go back to Visual Studio Code, we should be able to run this. Start debugging. And hopefully it'll tell you that the query tool, which is the name of our project, has ex exited with code zero, which means there are no errors. If we look at Power BI Desktop now, there is a brand new folder here called Auto Measures, and we have created a series of measures uh, automatically um, using our VS, VS Code. So if we drag this to the canvas, it should give us a, a value. We come back to Visual Studio Code and scroll down and, and have a look at the code. The very first thing we do is <clears throat> establish a connection on the AMOMD client library. This will allow us to run queries against the model. What we also need to do is connect to the same uh, model using the AMO client library. Well, this is how we're going to use Tom commands to issue, issue structural changes. We're then going to look at our query saved in myQueryColors.dax. That's what we created in Visual Stu uh, in, in Dax Studio. We're going to open the AMOMD connection. This allows us to run queries. And we're going to execute the query we created in Dax Studio with this line here at 49. Um, so that this can be rerun, we step through the model and we remove any measures that happen to have a description of auto measure. This will leave alone any other measures that you might have created into the model. So this clears the, um, uh, the measures that we're going to create later on down for rerunnability. Finally, we start iterating through the list of colors. And then for each color that we find, we generate a measure for that color. It's going to be called sum of red or black or green or blue sales amount. And we create the measure. Uh, we give the measure a name. The name happens to be uh, the, the, the name defined here. The description is really important. The description is going to be called auto measure. And this is what allows us to um, go and find this measure and clear it out on rerun. We're going to put it into a, a folder called auto measures. We're going to set the format currency. And here is the here is the DAX expression. Now this could also be saved into a file, but here I, I've, I've defined it in a um, as a string inside C sharp. And the my color variable inside the squiggly brackets is set by the row that we're up to in this iteration. And then we're finally going to add the measure to the sales table and importantly save the changes and close the connection. So let's test this by changing changing the uh, display folder to be something new. Auto measures too. And we'll just check Power BI Desktop. The display folder is called Auto Measures. And we will run this. It's very quick because this model is very small. And we should hopefully see the exacode is zero again. That's fantastic. Jump back to Power BI Desktop. We now have an Auto Measures 2. And believe it or not, these were all removed, deleted, and re-added um, on that, that iteration. So that's it, nice and quick. Um, we're using the AMOMD client libraries to connect to the model and run queries. And on the results of those queries, we are making structural changes by generating measures automatically on the fly. And, and you can you can do some pretty creative and interesting things with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it was easy to follow. Please let me know if you like this format um, so that I will uh, continue to do this for future blogs. Thank you.